Good evening. This is Pastor Lloyd. I'm here to talk to you tonight, Wednesday night, our Wednesday night North Point Bible study about a very important foundational subject, and that is the Word of God. We're going to quickly go over some basic doctrine, why is it important to believe correctly in the Bible in the right way, and also where did the scriptures come from? How did they come to existence? Anyway, I'm glad that you're a part of us. I want you to sit back, relax, pray. Well, we're going to pray after the intro video. And, and, and you know, I hope you learn something. The Spirit of the Lord works wonders. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to get a drink, just like me. See you on the flip side. The Bible. The Bible is a standard that God has given us that will trump any standard that's out there. I don't care how smart, how intelligent, how old you lived, who you know, or who you know. I don't care where you come from. I don't care where anyone comes from. The scriptures is the standard for Christian living. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for, for being with us as we're in your presence. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll bless this Wednesday night Bible study, that you'll bless every listener out there, God, that's tuning in, that's, that's hungry for your word. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll bless the speaker, God. Let teaching be easy. And as we have hearts to listen and ears to hear what your spirit has to say for us. Oh, Lord, you know who's going to be watching. You know who is tuning in on their either their phone or their computer to watch. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll bless each and every one of us. As we dive into your word, in Jesus' name, amen. So, the scriptures. I want to call over some, a few little aspects of it that you can't really simply find on Google. We all know about how the, what the Bible is made up, 66 books, written. Uh, the very first author was written by Moses, the first four books. And, you know, dispensationally, it falls in line. Like, for example, we're in grace right now, the dispensation of grace. While the Old Testament dispensationally was the law. Yet, it's still the same God. Different ways the law was given as a school teacher, or as the Bible says, a schoolmaster to teach us that we couldn't do it on our own. But yet in grace, Christ was that sacrifice. Christ took on the sins of the world, not just the sins of the world at that time, but the sins of the world from all the way in the past, all the way up to the cross. And from that, from the present of the whole world and all the way into the future, Yes, Christ took our sins from when we were born into sin, all the sins that we've done, up to the point when we 
accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. And then even the sins in the future, all the mistakes, all the failings, things that God is teaching us when we're learning to walk. This dispensation of grace. See, the Bible, and I want to look at it doctrinally. When flying through th thick clouds or at night, aircraft pilots can become so disorientated that they cannot tell the difference between what's up and what's down. Sometimes their bodies will indicate that they are flying level, meaning the aircraft, or climbing when they're actually diving. Sometimes diving into mountains or the ocean. At such times, they are essentially flying blind. I remember growing up as a child, my dad and uh, my family would have a Commodore 64. We would have these cool games that uh, you're flying a simulated aircraft. Flight Simulator from Microsoft was one of them and a few others. I used to love them. I mean, they weren't the kick in your face, super action pack games. They're the games that, that taught you patience when flying a simulated aircraft. And I remember one game in particular that this is before, you know, graphics were all cool. I mean, at that time, it was still cool. You didn't know better. I mean, the video games today are, are so realistic. You can't really tell the difference sometimes. Like the new flight simulator that's come out. Oh, incredible graphics. However, I remember back in the days, before that type of graphics, when, uh, when it was just the instrument paddle. Matter of fact, it didn't even show the runway or anything like that. It was just the instrument paddle. And you're flying an aircraft pretty much blind. You're relying completely on the instrument panel. And that was a flight simulator in with itself. Flying a simulated aircraft only by the instrument panel. So yes, so it's like essentially we're flying blind, relying on the aircraft's instruments to safely reach our destination. And that's how I learned. That's how I played. The drama was in it to where, yes, as far as the, uh, the altitude, as far as how, uh, how high you're, um, you're flying, your, your altitude, your attitude, your, your, how far you are off the ground, how fast you're going, um, as far as wind lift and everything else, the flaps, all that came to play when you're playing this game. Well, just like flying a real aircraft, it's important to be able to rely on the instruments. The instruments show the aircraft's altitude and direction, as well as many other things the pilot cannot see with their own eyes, how high they are off the ground, and all that. Thus, their instruments provided a solid point of reference that helps the pilot find their way. To learn to fly an aircraft with solely just using the instrument panel, you would think, wow, it's, it, that's that's kind of an incredible feat. If you really think about it, completely not being able to see out the windows. That was an incredible and cool little game. I remember spending many hours on it. And, and really, just looking at the little 8-bit <laughs> pixelated instrument panel, it was cool. See, a good pilot learns to place more trust 
and those instruments than his or her own, than his or her own body and instincts. Relying on, on the instruments is a, is a standard, is a solemn, grounded point versus relying on their eyes and their instincts in their body because those things could be deceptive. In the same way, we find ourselves flying blind. Flying blind in this confusing and sinful and degrading world where different voices pull us in many different directions. Like aircraft pilots, we cannot tell sometimes from what's up and down, what's right or what's wrong, especially now in today's environment where wrong is right and the right, what you always thought was right is now wrong. Imagine this generation that's growing up today. Man, I remember when I was much, much younger. This is when I was in high school. Even before then, I remember pastors and preachers and teachers teaching us how, uh, how they kicked God out of school. How, they, how, how the scripture goes, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. And how this new type of rearing children is, is, is degrading society. And I remember when there were security guards in schools going up to the, to the lockers and they had to, and it's like, wow, wow, we got to the point where there's security guards. Now, today in school, you're not even allowed to have lockers. I mean, now it's like almost airport security going in school where you can't have anything metal on you. It's really gone a long way. And even now today in this political environment where the fundamentals of Christianity now are being obliterated. How the, the very things, the very foundation of righteousness is being torn away. See, in this world, it's easy now to fly blind. Not only is it fallen, but it's confusing. You're being pulled in many different directions. And like aircraft pilots, we cannot tell what's up and what's down, what's correct and what's right. We can't even trust our own instincts. See, without help, we cannot discern the difference between the right and wrong. Without help, we can't tell how much wrong is wrong. Even in this present evil world, it's now okay to do something wrong as long as it's in moderation, right? We need a reliable reference point. We need a, we need a standard. Something that will show us where to go and how to live. Isn't that right? See, the Bible, the Word of God is the only solid point of reference in the world of humankind. That's right. The scriptures themselves, the Word of God, is the only solid reference, the only point of a standard of righteousness in the world of humankind. The Bible, the Word of God, reveals God to us and shows us where we came from. You understand what the Word of God does? 
The word of God makes the invisible visible. The word of God makes the very thing that a lot of people only believe in a reality to our lives. The word of God is not just the radio station, but it's not just even the, the VR headset, but it's the reality that brings the true existence of the creator and also shows us where we all come from. Why humanity sometimes plummets itself in some of the most horrible unrighteousness. Think about it. Even, even in, in our history books today, we could think back to where, man, it just takes one man that has a lot of charisma Right, being able to win people other win others to this individual, but yet he tried to wipe out the whole Jewish nation. That's Adolf Hitler. Same thing in, in, in times past. Humanity is corrupt, and there's a reason for that. It's because it's a lost. And dying, the humanity is lost. In itself, humanity cannot find salvation. In itself, humanity, if anything else, its righteousness compared to God's righteousness is like filthy rags. They try to do things. They try to, to, to be correct or polite. The humanity is lost. And we're having to deal with a, what's called a spiritual warfare on a daily basis. Where do you think the devil's at right now? You think the devil's in hell? No, he's not. And anyone that tells you that we are all in hell doesn't know basic doctrine. If anything else, they're only referencing how horrible humanity is, how lost humanity is, how the, humanity doesn't know. Yes, it has its evil side, but they don't know God. Humanity from birth is born separated or away from God. The Bible is the only solid point of reference. We know that we are in God's creation because his word tells us he created us. God created us. We see our need for salvation because the Bible reveals that to us. Through the Bible, we learn that we will have to give an account for our lives on the day of judgment and face the consequences of our sins. We know that because it's in the word of God. Now, as we continue with this, I will bring up the importance of the blood of Jesus. How he came to remit our sins. He came for the remission of sins. So we ourselves wouldn't have to suffer the consequences of them. That's what remit means. Now to retain the consequences is to suffer the consequences of sin. But Jesus came for the remission of sins. See, we, the only way we could find a safe landing 
flying through this life, right? The only way we're able to find a safe landing point, a place where we could touch down in our eternal journey is to use the word of God. To use the word of God as our standard, as our reference point. Since the Bible is so important to us, think about this. Since the Bible is so important to us, it must be the starting point. It must be the very beginning point of any legitimate doctrinal study. Any biblical teaching or any teacher out there must use the word of God as the beginning point, the starting point, the point of reference. That's what's so important about the word of God. And yes, we're going to be covering some other doctrinal truths that we will examine, but are still built on the foundation of scriptures. Every one of them. What we're going to talk about, we will begin with the scriptures. We're going to begin at a starting point on where we received the scriptures. And we're going to establish the truth that the scriptures are God's word to us. Not no other book that was written that, that some author said that I was inspired. You have to be careful when reading sometimes religious books, Christian books, especially when the authors themselves proclaim that God inspired me to write these. Because then what they're actually doing is putting their books up there with the word of God. Because we're going to go into very soon how we, how we received the word of God. But we have to be careful on sometimes reading other books. Now, don't get me wrong. I love reading books. Matter of fact, <laughs> I want to become more of a bookworm. That's how we learn. Not just reading the scriptures, which is vastly more important. Also, the testimonials and the, 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 the thoughts and the minds of other great men and women of God that has been, um, that has gone before us. We could learn from their experiences. We could learn from their teachings. Sometimes they may, they may give us a slightly different perspective and something that we've, we've always learned, we always know. Sometimes that's a, it's a blessing to do so. But yes, we're going to discover, we're going to actually discover and, and reveal certain truths in Scripture. Because Scripture is divinely inspired by God. We will show why we believe in the divine ins inspirational Scriptures of God. We will then consider the scriptures, revelation of God, and the internal dilemma that all of humankind face. As you walk outside, as you see people, you look at them. You notice a certain thing about them. And that is they're different. They have all experiences. They have different experiences that you have, that I have. Everyone has. You and I, we have different experiences. I love listening to people's testimonies. I love seeing. And God is working on every one of them. 
going back to the word of God, how did we receive the word of God? Well, it's called inspiration. The inspiration of the scriptures. The Bible is the most important book in history. No other book in the history of humankind has such a revolutionary influence on our lives. No other book has so has so inf affected humanity in the development of the Western world and also has a worldwide effect. According to the International Bible Society, to date, portions of the Bible have been translated into 2,287 languages and dialects. The Bible remains one of the best-selling books year after year. More people, matter of fact, they don't even reference it anymore because it outsells every book out there. So it does. It's the best-selling book year after year. And after 2,000 years, it shows no sign of having finished its progress. Clearly, the Bible is different from all other books. Whereas all other books are written by humans to humans, the Bible is from God to humankind. No other book. We believe the Bible is the word of the living God, the living creator that created the heavens, created the universe. The, the word of God came from God. A popular term used to refer to the writings contained in the Bible is what's called the scriptures. The scriptures. We will begin to examine how we got the scriptures and why we believe they are from God and why we believe they are the true authority for our lives. It's in the word of God. All scriptures. All scriptures. It's by given to us by inspiration from God. Written by men that God touched and inspired. Every dot, every point, every line, every word that was written was written, inspired by God to humankind. The word scriptures means holy writings. The scriptures are holy because God gave them. Simple as that. God, his holiness, where no sin could be around him. Matter of fact, humankind cannot even exist in his presence. We can't even look upon him because of our sin. That's why it was so important for Jesus to shed his blood. To cover us. But God is so holy. That just the act of him giving us the scriptures. Make them holy. By the time of Jesus' birth. The Jews had already accepted. The 39 books of the Old Testament as scripture. While Paul referred to the Old Testament as the Holy Scriptures. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. At first, the early church did not have any holy writings of its own. 
However, in reading Paul's letters, Paul's epistles that he's written to the churches, Peter recognized God's inspiration and referred to Paul's writing as scripture. This is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Believers, the Christians at that time, soon began to recognize the hand of God on other writers as well. Leading to the, comp, uh, leading to the gathering of these letters that now is called the New Testament. Today, we use the word scripture to describe both Old and New Testament. The main truth, the main truth that we want to talk about is that God inspired the scriptures. God inspired the scriptures. We will examine two aspects of this truth. One, the meaning of the word inspiration, and two, the process God used to bring the scriptures to us. The writing or the writers of scriptures led by the Holy Spirit. We use the word inspiration to describe the matter in which God gave his message to the original writers of scriptures, the Old Testament. The word, the word inspiration means God breathed. God breathed. The process of inspiration began with God. For prophecy, and this is in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse uh, 21. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man. But men spake from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit, or as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. In this passage, the word prophecy refers to the scriptures. Peter asserts that God is the original source of the scriptures and that he gave them to us through the Holy Ghost. Humans did not decide what to write. Humans did not have it have their own agendas and wrote these things themselves. No. They did not write the scriptures on their own. But God inspired them to do so and breathed into them. The Holy Spirit touched and led the individuals. Every one of those were used as an instrument in God's skillful hands. God's the one who wrote the scriptures in such a way that we could say the scriptures are from God. We could say that. See, Paul stated, and he says this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scriptures is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. That's in 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy Chapter 3, verse 16. Again, this means that God, in his living source behind all scriptures, the Holy Spirit is the breath of God that breathed into those writers of the old and was inspired to write, came from God, did not come from man, did not come from, oh, uh, their own agendas, their own wills, their own outline came from God as they were moved. See, some people believe in partial inspiration, meaning that there are some parts of the scriptures that, yes, are truly inspired, but yet there are some parts that are not. The problem with that 
is there's loopholes because hum- humans, humanity, we're not perfect. Only God is. That's what we consider as a mistake, a mistaken point of view. It's not true. God's the one who breathed. See, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 32, Paul wrote, The spirits of the prophets were subjected to the control of the prophet. God does not simply take control of the prophet and force that people to speak specific words. And that's another um, error point of view that God actually took human beings out of their own will and wrote uh, as a mechanical thing, meaning that God took, took over them. No. God did not simply take control of the prophets and force the person to speak specific words. No, God works through the prophet, through those men of old, through them, and giving the prophet that message for that time. And God, yes, giving them that message and that for that time, but God also was thinking further in the future. And even though he wrote at a specific at a specific time, inspired that person to write that specific message, God is so intelligent. It, it makes the smartest person in the world look like a complete idiot compared to to the intelligence of God, because even though through that message, God still spoke to the rest of humanity in all time, even adding prophecy that needed to be fulfilled, and even prophecy through the modern age. See, God knew what he was doing. God knew exactly what needed to be said. I'm going to go ahead and close because uh, there's a lot I could talk about, especially just in the the God-inspired scriptures. But I wanted to, to let you know that, A, the Word of God is none other like any other book. B, we have to be careful. To get good book sales, some authors say that I was inspired by God to write these things and even write prophecy. I'm, there's even some famous authors out there that are writing claimed prophecy in, in other books. And, and if you really boil it down to where the rubber meets the road, in their mind, in their perspective, they're literally elevating their own books, their own books up there with the Word of God. So you need to read the Word of God and read them. But you have to be careful with that. There's certain religions that I'm not going to name to name that have other books as companion books to, to the Bible. We have to be careful. Scripture, the Bible is complete. You don't really need any other book. Yes, a lot of people like talking about that. And and sure, the Bible is written, especially in Revelation and Daniel, and there's certain aspects of it that that by itself you would need need, uh, companion books, other books from the Bible to kind of explain what certain other things are. But as a whole, the Bible is complete. You don't have to have, you don't have to go buy a secular book somewhere you know, it gives good perspective sometimes, but we have to be careful. The Bible is inspired by God, truly inspired by God. I like explaining it like this. You know, my wife is more of a reader, a book reader than I. 
I am. And I've, I've heard her talk about, I've heard her say how you could actually understand the author by reading their books. You can actually get to know how the author thinks, how the author feels by reading their books. Imagine, if you would, doing that, applying that same thing to reading God's word. It's so applicable. You get to know how God is. You get to know the way God feels about certain things by reading his word. By reading the Old Testament, how God loved the children of Israel. But yet, not angry with them. How there are certain representatives of God, like Moses, who stood in the gap when God's anger kindled against his children. Moses stood in the gap. How Moses learned to pray. Abraham followed God by faith. I'm telling you. Every one of these Old Testament patriarchs, how you could read their lives and you could see how they applied certain Christian attributes like faith, praying, right? And you could see God's attitude towards that. You could see how God, how certain ones prayed. Wouldn't you love to learn how to pray? But yet it's there in all scripture. Some people have told me that they don't like reading the, the Bible because they don't quite get it. They don't understand it. Well, go find yourself a translation. I like the English Standard Version or the New International Version. And we're going to go into why there are certain translations differences uh, much later on. But... Find yourself an easy read Bible. I like, personally, I like the King James Version. I grew up reading the King James Version. I memorized a lot of scriptures in the King James Version. And I've been told, yes, they don't talk like that. Back then when it was written, that was a, kind of a pure English. But I've learned. But there's the English Standard Version. There's the New International Version. There's the... All these other type of versions, right? Find yourself an easy to read version and read the word of God. Get yourself hooked up into a church. Well, there's other people that believe have a, the same like-minded attitude as with you. We're all growing a different path, but yet we can learn, we can get strength from one another. So get yourself into a church. Find yourself, if you happen to be in the, the Round Rock, Texas area on a Sunday, come visit us. We would love to have you. God does not change. Yet we could read through, through Scripture how people would change, but God doesn't change. His attitude towards righteous living hasn't changed. His attitude towards obedience. This morning in our devotion, we talked about how Joseph, how God, and why God chose Joseph to be the man that he was to rear and to upbring the most important person of all history, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God picked a man to rock the cradle of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when he was just a little baby. And the same attributes that Joseph had, that he followed God in the little things and the big things, and he was obedient. The same attributes, if we apply today, will rock the world. Amen? Amen. Ah, there's so much more I could go through with this, brothers and sisters. Reasons why we believe the scriptures are inspired. Claims from the Old Testament authors. Oh, it's so good. 
testimony of fulfilled prophecy. But tonight I knew I was going to cover everything. I wanted to cover the importance of scriptures, why it's so important to believe that it's a standard, it's a point of reference, and all scripture is inspired. Not just a little bit of it, all of it. Amen? Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time again to be in your presence. Lord, each and every one of us that's watching this the stream tonight. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll keep us, keep us safe. Lord, as we crack open that Bible, as we begin to read systematically your word. Lord, as we look up, I don't know, on the internet, um, annual Bible reading references and things like that. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll help us as we get into your word. We start to read your word. We might not be able to understand all of it, but we'll keep reading. God, because it's through your word that all scripture, through your word, all scripture is inspired by you and is to teach us, is to help us, is to minister unto us. Lord, I pray everyone under the sound of my voice, God, that you'll minister unto them, that you'll draw us closer to you. I pray, God, that you keep us safe until next time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, God bless you all. Hope to see you. If, like I said, if you happen to be in the Round Rock, Texas area on a Sunday, come visit us. We'll love to have you. God bless you. Have a nice and wonderful day wonderful evening. God bless.